Since playing it, Tales of Kinzera Zhao has never left me. Grief is life's most inevitable tragedy, and up until this game, I've never felt it adequately explored in gaming. It's weird because death is practically everywhere in video games. Numbered hearts, a health bar, a kill streak, a Dark Souls your death sign, but it's an instrument in service of nothing substantial. So for all of death's ubiquity in gaming, grief is almost entirely absent. It's no mystery why video games struggle to adapt an experience as thick and prickly as grief. Video games seldom allow the spaciousness for meditation that more prosaic art forms offer to explore one of life's most amorphous heartbreaks. There's an imperative that games must be ceaselessly entertaining, and a coherent narrative might fall to the side, but who cares if you're having fun? After the loss of his father a few years ago, voice and screen actor Abubakar Kasalim, known for his roles in House of Dragons and Assassin's Creed Origins, sought a video game as the vessel for his grief. Four years ago, I decided that I needed to try and process my grief in a way that felt true to me and him. So I took the biggest risks of my life and threw everything that I had in making a game, a, a piece of art that honored him, an ode to the people we have loved and lost. So, so the reason I'm here tonight is because with the love and support of a lot of people here, I'm gonna take another big risk and I'm gonna show you what we've been building. You know, I'm gonna offer you this game, a game from my old man. I hope you like it. Abubakar Kasalim founded the media company Surgeon Studios and developed Tales of Kinzera Zhao, published by Electronic Arts Independent Wing EA Originals a masterwork in game design and narrative that strikes the elusive balance in gaming's tug of war to deliver thoughtful ruminations on the human experience while also delivering a fun time. Tales of Kinzera is a story within a story. The game opens on Zuberi, a young man who has recently lost his father. To help his son process his loss, Zuberi's father leaves behind a book chronicling the story of Zhao, a young shaman who must make a deal with the god of death, Kalunga. The main quest finds you liberating three lost great spirits of the lands of Kinzera so that Kalunga may bring your father back to life. Inspired by a tapestry of Bantu folk stories, the world tells of Kinzera is rich with mythology that many of us Africans know as our heritage. As much as Kinzera is a Wakanda-inspired hodgepodge of too many cultures to draw any clear influence, I found myself having fun with the references to Tokoloshi or the noticeable in the Bella patterns in the game's environment. Tales of Kinzera doesn't shy away from its gorgeous design that can often just take your breath away. For all its visual variety and splendor, Tales of Kinzera is a mechanically difficult game. I found myself constantly struggling with precise platforming puzzles and complex enemy encounters and died more times than I'm proud to mention. Through exploration, the game progressively equips you with the skills to assist you in combat and traversal. In combat, you get the choice between the sun or the moon mask, with the moon mask for long range combat and the sun mask for powerful close range encounters. Tales of Kinzera takes its inspiration from the Metroidvania genre, which generically emphasizes exploration, challenge, repetition, and an evolving master of the world it's based in. So yes, it can be slow, it can be frustrating, and it often forces you to adapt and grow stronger against the game's progressing challenges. But that's because Tales of Kinzera isn't simply a game about grief. The game itself is a manifestation of it. The boss battles are the most fun parts of the story because not only are they varied and complex in their own unique ways, but through them, we get the game's most compelling story beats. As Zhao liberates the great spirits of Kinzera, each of them leave him a unique lesson to process the loss of his father. Kila mzaze na jokwamba siku moja lazima ampishe mtoto waki. Inaweza kuwa vigumu kuelewa. Kwa mzaze kunaweza kuhisi kama kufa kwa nafsi yake. What should have been a welcome breath of fresh air for the world of gaming has been mired in controversy 
from a right-wing faction of gamers. Tales of Kinzara Zao. Tales of Kinzara Zao. Tales of Kinzara Zao. Under the Go Woke or Go Broke banner, tens of thousands of gamers have actively boycotted Tales of Kinzara due to Abubakar Salim's association with Sweet Baby Inc., a consulting agency in the gaming industry that aids video game companies in achieving diversity through their games. Consequently, from the available data, despite positive reviews from critics, the sales of Tales of Kinzara Zao have been negatively impacted by this boycott. As of July 2nd, it was reported that members of the talented team that made the game had been laid off. Tales of Kinzara Zao revealed what some are calling the new culture war in gaming, where the most vulnerable people, the workers and people who make the games are the most severely affected. The industry needs Tales of Kinzara a glimpse of what a more diverse video game industry can look like. Africans and those in the diaspora deserve a place in gaming and for games to be catered for them. If a small, independent, inexpensive passion project like Tales of Kinzara can cause this much militancy from reactionary gamers, it shows that they don't actually care about the development of gaming. Gaming isn't wasted on appealing to wider audiences or wokeism, but gaming is being ruined by gamers. I'll never forget Tales of Kinzara Zao. It's one of the most moving games I've played this year and might remain as one of my favorites, not only because it beautifully represents cultures almost completely excluded from gaming, but because it's an inventive game that elucidates on life's most tender and vulnerable experience. It's a thrilling game for everyone to enjoy and I can't say emphatically enough that you should play Tales of Kinzara Zao.